Oh, it smells beautiful out. You know, I'm one of those kind of guys that really likes to ask questions. Sometimes I don't get it. Sometimes I don't understand. Sometimes maybe it's just a little pig-headed of me or maybe stiff neck. But if I don't understand something, I always figured it was a good idea to ask questions. I found out very early on in my Christian walk that when somebody doesn't know the answer to my question, they don't like me asking the question. <laughs> Oops. As a matter of fact, I found out pretty fast that most people, when you ask them a question, they don't want to be questioned. <laughs> they don't want to discuss it. As a matter of fact, I didn't feel comfortable for the longest time asking questions until I got around a bunch of Jews. <laughs> and then we ask questions. Hey, no problem. You know, because you get an answer. So, I was always fascinated by people that, you know, get upset if you ask a question. Me, I personally love questions. I love to see someone ask a follow-up question. Because, in my mind, if you ask a follow-up question, you're really trying to get to the heart of the matter. You're trying to find out the truth. Now, for me, I've always been interested in what was intention contention and direction because you see the intention of what people do most of the time is good lots of people have good intentions I look at most of church history study it really in depth I try to find out what the guy was doing at the time where he was at where what he was thinking where what he was doing and you know what God was doing with them and how he was affecting people around him and so a lot of what I see in church history is good intentions, you know. I see a lot of what the Catholic Church did as real good intentions. I see a lot of what Jewish Talmudic reasoning and some of the synagogal movements, you know, as far as, you know, Rambam and all this other junk, in which a lot of it's junk, is uh, good intentions. But you see, good intentions doesn't mean that there won't be contentions or there won't be misdirections or misconceptions of what the person's intent was as opposed to the content of what they did. A lot of times I see different reformations or denominations in Christianity the same way. The intent is good, the content's not bad, but boy, when you get down the road, the perspective is completely off the wall. Most of the time, I don't think that even the founding person would know what they were talking about. Nowadays, I think, you know, a lot of times Christians run around and tell me what the founding fathers meant or said. And I hate to tell them this, but I don't think the founding fathers would even know who they were talking about. They would say, me? I'm a founding father? Since when? Ha! Huh, you weren't there. And I hate to say it, but I think that's more accurate than what most people are saying. So, a lot of times when I get into Christianity, you know, and I sit down and I start thinking... That's my biggest problem. I think for a living. Okay, maybe not for a living, but I tend to think. I tend to, you know, kind of look at the word and go, Oh, hmm, interesting. And then I hear somebody talk about what maybe I read, and I go, Really? You're kidding. Are you serious? You mean, you mean that you get that out of here? You know, and sometimes I go, yeah, you don't know. You know, that's what you got. Well, that's what you get. It doesn't mean that I'm going to go there, but, you know, okay, you know. And a lot of times people make up a lot of what they get from what they heard, not what they read. Because sometimes reading will reveal a lot more than just listening to someone tell you what's there. Or someone guide you to read as they want you to read it. Because that can be also a form of kind of like manipulation. So I'm kind of like, you know, very careful about that. I'll go along, you know, in line with what most people are doing, you know, like sometimes line upon line, precept, precept, you know, that kind of thing, you know. And, you know, I kind of go, okay, yeah, I got you, you know. But then when something doesn't sound right, I go, eh, and I go check it out later. One of the things that I discovered in doctrines, most doctrines have a good intention. You know, they're they're kind of like putting a name on top of what the Bible says. Sometimes they're not bad, you know. 
the doctrine of whatever, you know, forgiveness, salvation, you know, anything. It, you know, it's kind of like, okay, you know, they kind of put it into a little box, you know, and kind of pull some scriptures together and make it into a doctrine, you know, and it's like, okay. If it works for you, good. But <laughs> then I come along. Ah, uh, you know that doctrine? You know, that, it doesn't sound right. You know, like the doctrine that we're talking about today. You know, the doctrine of higher power. Ooh. Higher power. Hmm. Supreme authority. Ooh. Wow. Cool. You know. And whatever your higher power is, hey, you know. And AA, in their intention, kind of created some contention for some people nowadays. And I, I kind of like to address it a little bit because I know that the intent of the person who started it is not the direction that they go today. You know, it's like, well, the, you know, there's two different little perspectives here. I do believe the man who started it took a Bible and said, hey, you know what? We need to make it kind of like, yeah, I can't just give a Bible and tell people, you know, some drunk to go ahead and read it, you know, although you'll find most Bibles that are read are read from a drunk sitting in a motel room somewhere, flipping open a Bible that was in a motel room from the Gideons, you know. So who knows? But Bill, you know, as they call him, or whoever it is that started AA, you know, and all of the different ways that you, you know, come across the histories, had good intentions. And I think that the whole program is a good idea. But sometimes good ideas get put out or implemented maybe a little bit distorted, maybe a little bit off track somehow. And lately I've been seeing a lot of people posting things about their higher power or you know having a confidence in a higher power. Me? Man, as soon as I hear someone talk about higher power, eh, no, not me, man. I start heading the other direction. Because, you see, I have a problem. I read the Word of God. I studied the Bible. You know, I kind of talk to God. God talks to me? Oh, boy, is that a mess, you know. I like the truth. The truth sets me free. You know, I don't get caught up or bound up in somebody's interpretation, but I make application directly from the Word of God. Hey, you know, maybe I'm a disciple of Jesus and the Word of God, and Jesus is the Word of God, so, you know, I kind of, you know, hey, well, you got it. So, for me, you know, it just doesn't sound right, higher power. Because, you know, I kind of got a problem with one scripture. Maybe it's just a little problem. Maybe a little problem for you, too, once you hear me say it. Because you may not have paid attention to, you know, higher power, because after all, hey, there's a lot of drunks getting saved. Okay? They're not going through dry runs because they're going to meetings. They're going through reruns, you know, because they have to rerun whatever it is that they've done because they're not getting freed up, but they're getting fellowship of their sufferings together. A lot of times, some of the, what I see is this reciprocal addiction of meetings is a reciprocal addiction of meetings. I think somewhere along the line, you know, you got to kind of break free from the bottle and move on to something that should have been the maturation of stepping away from this addiction that says you're an addict forever, because you're not. So, maybe the higher power isn't quite so high as the higher power thinks he is. Because, you see, the Bible doesn't call anyone a higher power. As a matter of fact, it warns you about powers. It says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You know, I don't have a problem with you, you don't have a problem with me. Hey, you know why? Because we wrestle against principalities and powers and spiritual darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Powers? Did he say powers? Did it say powers? Did it say higher powers or just powers? Spiritual wickedness, high places, you know, you could call it a high power, you know. Ooh, that's awful close to what the Bible says. Only it doesn't call the higher power a positive thing. It kind of says we wrestle against 
that power or a power, how do you tell the difference? Well, you see, you don't necessarily really want to go with something that replaces Jesus. Because anything that replaces Jesus probably isn't in Jesus' name, much less with Jesus. As a matter of fact, I think I got to tell you, when you have the higher power, you're not supposed to be talking about the divisions in the religions, you know, because you're supposed to be talking about the higher power, not the divisions by name, you know, and saying Jesus is not something that we really, you know, it's okay for you, but it may not be for me, so my higher power is not Jesus, it's something else. Ooh, maybe AA isn't all it's cracked up to be, or maybe AA is a way, but not the way. <gasps> Really? Well, you see, all things are lawful to me. I mean, I could get involved in AA or NA or Narconon or some weird thing or whatever it may be. I don't know personally why I would because, hey, you know, whom the Son has set free, set free indeed. And, you know, if you got to repeat your cycles over and over and over again to get it, I highly recommend AA. If you need that kind of fellowship instead of church, I highly recommend it. But, you know... I kind of have seen some other things, you know, that have happened in my lifestyle. I've seen alcoholics quit cold turkey. Or is that God's way? I don't know. Either way, you know, God delivered them. I've seen different things happen in the Word of God that don't fit the big book. Matter of fact, I understand the big book being a nice discipleship material that I would use as a tool, but I would not supplement the fact of this for the way of that. Because just because, you know, you can use, you know, an AA 12-step program doesn't mean anything's wrong with that or right per se any more than we use acronyms like pray or you know which means I don't know I don't even know what pray means <laughs> but you always have these little separate the word into little acronyms you know praise and I don't even know what pray stands for you know I can't deal it off my fingers because I don't do those kind of acronyms you know the only time I do it acronyms was when I was advertising to some advertising gimmick like you know association of Christian theater and stage acts you know that was my little thing but Acronyms also are kind of like man's idea with a good intention, but down the road when you get wiser and smarter and maybe not as a child so much, it causes contention because if it doesn't agree with the Word of God, it might not be the Word of God. And you see, that's where I have a problem with higher power. I have a problem with this idea of putting someone else in charge when Jesus himself said, your father. Now, I wouldn't have a problem if they said, we have a father in heaven who loves us all. Well, that should cover the higher power. He died, he gave his son so that all could come to know him. Well, that doesn't sound like a problem for a higher power. As a matter of fact, most of what the higher power supposedly is initiated for, I think is solved by the reality of your understanding of knowing really who the Father is, because once you really know God the Father, hey, you know, you don't have so much a problem with, you know, sin and forgiveness and mercy and all the other things that supposedly Christianity makes so hard to accept, so they have to create a higher power so you could not isolate anyone. I think, you know, the Creator of the universe, our Father who created it all, I think that covers it pretty good. Matter of fact, because of grace, being that grace is how we're saved, I, 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 I kind of get the idea that maybe the higher power wasn't such a good idea. Maybe at the time, you know, there was like a lot of people with no power and they wanted more power, so they got a higher power. Well, that might be one rung up on the ladder, but I like to go to the top. You know, if I'm going to talk to the head of the board, the chief honcho, the high in the sky, the man upstairs, or whatever you do, you know, play with those colloquialisms. I want to be with the one who's in charge. You know, I want to know from the guy who made it all, who said it all, and who did it all. I want to know the facts. 
And I don't think the higher power has given us all the facts. Matter of fact, if you start taking some of it apart and start looking closely, you see there are some issues with AAs or NAs or you know some of these recovery things that what are you recovering really or trying to recover sobriety? Wait a minute, that's the flesh, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Aren't I supposed to like crucify the flesh? Deny myself? You know, I mean, aren't there things that like aren't really, you know, book psychology, but or sociology in this case, but rather are direct theology? I mean, what Jesus said, Jesus did, and what Jesus could do, I think works for you. Now, I'm kind of stupid that way, but I don't know. I don't think alcoholism was like one of the exceptions to what God could deal with. I think as a matter of fact, it was one of the directions God said to go to. Addictions are addictions, whether they be sexual, drinking, drugs, all same to me. Looks quite a bit like addiction is addiction and it's all dealt with the same way. God. Because if the Lord can't deliver then the Lord can't deliver. If Jesus can't save, then he can't save. Why are we so willing to shuffle off something for a sake of fellowshipping of a bunch of mutual sinners indulging in what? A recuperative process or a redemption process? Because I'm not convinced that everyone that's in NA with all the little gimmick things is really working towards redemption as much as they are towards reconciling their addiction to the world and adapting to it in a way that they say they still are addicted today when the reality is God has made them a new creation old things are passed away behold all things become new I can't go there I can't follow a higher power I can't follow a system that keeps me in bondage when I want to be set free to follow Jesus. When I fail and fall, I don't want to start over again from the beginning of sobriety days and start counting them one by one and put such pressure on my mind and my pressure on my soul that I have to keep making more meetings to feed my addiction to meetings so that I don't feed my addiction to my flesh because my flesh is addicted to both. I would rather have my consummation consuming the attention of the focus of my spirit to a greater degree that I'm no longer controlled by my flesh and have to go to a meeting than I am set free to let my spirit be filled with the Holy Spirit of God and directed by Him to God whenever I find myself in challenges and trials and tribulations because it isn't the meeting that's going to stop me, but it is the Spirit of God that can convict me and convince me to choose not to do and not to sin as I might want to do. So you see, it's really about what power you think you have or don't have based upon the Word of God and not the big book. The higher power is good for the big book. I have no problem with it being a big book higher power or a power of the big book. I do have a problem with trying to change the Word of God and what it says it can do and replace it with the Word of man and what powers there be that I cannot see what they are or if they work for me. I would rather trust in the Lord my God who made heaven and earth and who created me in His image than to trust in the interpretation of anyone who tries to give me an explanation for addictions and the supplementation of a way to live with my addictions by telling me I'm an addict. I'm not. I'm a child of God born in the image and the likeness of Jesus Christ. And it's no longer I that liveth but Christ that liveth in me. So the life that I now live in the flesh I live by the will of the Son of God who died for me and gave himself for me. And if he's willing to die for me to set me free then I'm willing to live for him and give him the authority over my flesh and I'm willing to crucify that that I might be made alive unto Jesus till the day I die it's not a higher power 
it is the Spirit of God. It's not a higher authority. It is my Father in Heaven. It's not a question of AA versus NA versus whatever way that you choose to go. It's a correction choice of deciding to follow the way, the truth, and the life that Jesus is.